what this insight depended upon was your overcoming the illusion that space separates things. That is to say, the space, the interval between your body and mine, the interval created by birth at one end and death at the other, and then after somebody's death, then somebody else's birth. These are events with intervals between them. And normally we regard these intervals in time and these intervals in space as having no importance, no function. We tend to see the universe itself as really consisting in all the stars and galaxies. That's what it is. That's what we notice. But the space in which all this happens is sort of written off as something that isn't really there. But what one has to realize is that the space is an essential function of the things in the space. After all, you can't have separate stars unless there is a space around. Eliminate the space and you will see you couldn't have this phenomenon at all. And vice versa. You couldn't have the space. They wouldn't be there in any sense whatsoever if there weren't the bodies in it. So the bodies in the space and the space are two aspects of a single continuum. They're related together in exactly the same way as a back and a front. And you just don't get one without the other. So the moment you see that intervals, that space is connective, you can understand at once how you are not just to be exclusively defined as a flash of consciousness that occurs between two eternal darknesses, which is the popular common sense view which Western man has of his own life. That you consider that in the darkness that comes before your birth, there was no you, and in the eternal darkness that follows your death, there is likewise no you. And I'm going to discuss these matters, not by appealing to any special spooky knowledge, as if I had been traveling on the higher planes and knew all my previous incarnations, and therefore could tell you authoritatively that uh, you are much more than this individuality. I'm going to do it on a basis of complete common sense, that everybody has access to the facts. And that just what you have to realize is that life is a pattern of immense complexity. And what you call yourself as a living organism, say, I am my whole body at the very least. Now, what is that body? That body is recognizable, and I recognize my friends when I meet them again, with luck, and you recognize me. Although the last time any of you saw me, I was absolutely something entirely different from what I am now. Just as the flame of a candle is never a constant. The flame of a candle is a stream of hot gas. Only you say the flame of the candle as if it were a constant. Well, it is a recognizably constant pattern. The spear-shaped outline of the flame and its coloration is a constant pattern. But in exactly the same way, we are all constant patterns. And that's all we are. The only thing constant about us at all is the doing rather than the being. It's the way we behave, the way we dance. Only there's no we that dances. There's just the dancing. Just as the flame is the streaming of hot gas, just as a whirlpool in a river is a whirling of streaming water. There is no thing that whirlpools. There is the whirlpool. And in the same way, each one of us is a very, very delightfully complex undulation of the energy of the whole universe. Only by our process of miseducation, we've been deprived of the knowledge of that fact. Uh, not as if though, there was someone to blame for this, because it's always with our own tacit consent. Because life is basically a game of hide-and-seek. 